we are live. Welcome to Marvel's Punisher Season 2 Thoughts. So, spoilers throughout this entire video for everything... Everything MCU leading up to and including the season. I may well spoil the finale while talking about the first episode, so be forewarned. And... Yeah, um... I continue to really love the, you know, it, it's too bad it was it was cancelled. This was another great Marvel Netflix season. Um, yeah, let's dive right in. So, starting with episode one, Roadhouse Blues. Now, let's see. Yeah, so... Uh, I saw someone, I think it might have been the We Watched a Movie duo, say that in their opinion, the best Punisher story is the origin where he kills the people responsible for his family's death. I respectfully disagree. And, yeah, I appreciate that, you know, this season, yeah, it starts after, you know, uh, yeah, so, season one, he thought he was done, but over the course of the season, he gets the last little bit of revenge you know you got you got to be thorough to really make sure you squeeze every last bit of juice out of there and yeah you know this season is actually ah what's the word you know basically he he has a chance with with beth and he chooses not to i'll, I'll talk more about that uh, actually yeah yeah very shortly so, in Season 2 of Daredevil, Jessica Jones, Luke Cage, and Iron Fist, you know, the, the titular hero is more extreme, and other characters point out how far they're going. You know, made me kind of wonder if this would do that too, but, you know, it's, it's hard to get much more extreme than the Punisher already was in Season 1 and in Daredevil Season 2, so, yeah. So this season has Frank mentoring, taking care of a young person. When you have an unstoppable killing machine like Frank, you kind of have to have something like that bring out the humanity, raise the stakes. Like, video games and comic books can get away without exploration of character and plot, but not shows and rarely movies. Like, don't get me wrong, I still, I, it's one of the few licensed games that I love is the 2004 Punisher game, which is a tie-in to the Thomas Jane movie. He does the voice, and it's that weird kind of thing where kind of the game is going back over the plot of the movie, but it's also sort of taking place after the Like, specifically, like, he will... I believe it's the first level, or very early on. He says, you know, now that I, you know, blah, 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 to, took care of the... Oh, actually, yeah, I'm spoiling. Now that I took care of the Saint family, I'm free to do other things, you know, something like that. But he still fights the Russian, even though, like... Pretty sure he was very dead by the end of of that movie but but yeah anyway that that game does not particularly explore frank it's just doing the what a lot of the comics do and just you know the the catharsis of the yeah love that love the you know a lot of the comics i do think that it's especially the moment you have live action because it just it does hit your brain different when you see a real person like even if you know no, no no it's staged you know that's not real blood those aren't real bullets people aren't actually getting hurt even though it looks like it it just hits you different than if it's drawn or animated and yeah you know i if you hate the character of amy that's perfectly all right but i do think you kind of have to have i i don't think it would have worked you know, both the season one had micro, you know, you kind of have to have him with another character who challenges the notion that he should just go around killing everyone and kind of forcing him into a spot where he either, you know, either he says, yeah, I just want to kill every person that I think is bad, at which point we you know, lose some, some sympathy for him and have a harder time empathizing with him, or he's going to say, look, I don't want to kill everyone. I just, 
you know, and and actually explain it because the moment he puts words to it, it just becomes more palatable to the viewer. Now, so yeah, uh, one of the first things in this episode, you know, Frank using his submachine gun against enemies, very cool. I don't think it was necessary to start to to do the nonlinear timeline thing and start with the end of the episode. Um, I don't know. I guess some people would have been really frustrated with the lack of action until the maybe the second half of the episode, but yeah. So yeah, Frank helps Beth the bartender, meets Amy, goes home with Beth. We get some backstory for Beth and some not male gay sex intercut with talk, so clearly it's not there for titillation. It's actually characterization. Clearly it would be good for Beth to have someone in her life, like maybe Frank like how he felt devoted to being there for his own family. Basically, this is a chance for him to get a normal life or some semblance of it since we find out the government erased his old identity, his crimes, and I think it's noteworthy that the thing that prevents this normal life is his decision to help Amy. Nobody else would have or could have. He says later in the season, I'm not the one who dies, I'm the one who does the killing, and when I don't, the wrong people get hurt. At this point, he simply can't truly embrace any alternative. Frank Castle is dead. Call him the Punisher. And that's the only way he rocks shit. Banging heads, ripping threads. If he wasn't killing people, he'd be better off dead. But but yeah, you know, um, Amy challenges him on, you know, late, later he says, ah, some, you know, someone had to help, you know, something like that. And she points out, no, 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 you made the choice. You could have, because they weren't gunning for him at all. Like, if he had done nothing... They would have gotten the, the you know, the, yeah, they got the laptop, they would have gotten the film, they would have killed Amy, and, yeah, you know, John would have never started pursuing them, John the Pilgrim. Um, yeah, and Frank made the choice, you know, he, he knew that, you know, as, essentially it is this thing of, you know, Beth could get hurt in the crossfire, as she does, but Amy... That's not Crossfire, that's, you know, they, they actually are trying to kill her, so either he saves her and risks Crossfire and collateral damage, or he lets this young person die that, you know, at the end of the day, he really, he just can't let someone die. That is the, the active choice he makes. He can't let someone die without being sure that, like they they you know did something truly horrible and yeah you know the the vibe you get off her like she's she you know, kind of rude to him and and you know maybe not the most like <laughs> yeah she's you know kind of typical teenage girl that i i got to say when they gave her like <laughs> old white guys trying to write young women dialogue like at one point she instead of saying shit she says s h exclamation point t that was kind of annoying but other than that i thought she was fine you know and and yeah you know when she when she and frank first meet like you know she's rude to him you, you get the vibe that she's maybe not the the nicest person or the you know she's not trying to make friends she she pushes people away Unless they might be able to help her, you know, because she's a con artist. The more people that are paying attention to her, the harder her job is. The The closer she gets to people who aren't in on the con artist stuff, you know, because because we see uh, Chantel, they get along until the betrayal, of course. Um, let's see. There was... Th right, right, but yeah. Um... You do not get the sense that she is a bad person, you know, when when she first meets Frank. Now, let's see. And, you know, I like him faking being drunk to, to get into the bathroom. And he, you know, because he's like, because the guy who's standing in, you know, in front of the bathroom door, like Frank is basically conveying to him. There's, you know, one of, one of the women in there I kind of want to get with, you know. So, like, if Frank just walked up, like, normal, you know, the guy would be like, okay, that's what I'm looking for, you know, gun and, and shoot him. 
But no, he walks up like staggering, he's like, "There's a girl out there." No, no, no. I I saw her go in there. I definitely, you know, I just gotta get, you know. And yeah, you know, basically the guy's like, oh, "I can't believe this creep." You know, he's not gonna shoot him for being a creep, but he is gonna try to keep him away. And Frank gets close enough so he can attack. And gets into the bathroom. They all have knives. He takes off his belt. I don't know why. Maybe he thinks that one of them is going to pull up Ben Carson. Try to stab him in the dick if he's wearing a belt. Very cool fight in the bathroom in the bar. And we close on Madani and Jigsaw. And she believes that he is um, faking it. So she wants to... Yeah. And that brings us to the second episode, Fight or Flight. Let's see. So, so yeah, we find out, you know, since the end of season one, Frank has just been going place to place. And, yeah, you know, basically, he's been looking for something, and it wasn't Beth. It was Amy. It was a mission. It was a new war, you know. And, yeah, I, I think that is... I, I, uh, I'm I so glad that this season is not just, oh, by the way, there's yet another set of people that you have to kill in order to avenge your dead family. No, no, it's, you know, yeah, it's, it has nothing to do with him, but he can't help it. You know, it, it actually, uh, I put a couple of the Rambo movies up behind me. It's somewhat similar to, yeah, you know, Rambo 1, it's, he's not, he doesn't, um... I guess I don't want to say, but it, it, yeah, um, you know, Rambo 2, Vietnam. After that, he basically has to have, you know, get a mission and the movies will start with someone telling him, you know, this is something that you should be, you know, yeah, yeah, it didn't really get personal again until the, the fifth movie. You know, movies three and four, it's basically he accepts a mission. He he agrees that he there these are some people he should fight. And here are some people he should fight for. Yeah, and Amy has the line, kill yourself to prove a point. Very male of you. Is it too early to say that I really like the Amy character? Let's see. So when Amy gets a room, we meet the exhausted Debbie. I think there's some empathy for wage slaves, but they do also kind of make her annoying to the others. Like, not only Amy, who, you know, yeah, of course, but also Frank. I think we, the audience, are supposed to find Amy annoying and Debbie. Yeah, I mean, she's not, yeah, I, I, I don't love that characterization um, of Debbie. Yeah, and Frank claims he's Pete. Amy gives the name Rachel, so that, you know, we see at this point they are still lying to each other. And Amy does remove the bullet. I, I don't know if there is, like, a supercut of, like, injuries being treated in Marvel Netflix shows, but I feel like that would, that would go on for a while, you know. And, but, but yeah, I do appreciate here, you know, he took a bullet because he protected her, you know, and that is also like, she does actually, um, yeah, um, he, he makes a, you know, she, she does get the sense from early on that he is looking to protect her, not just, you know, cause she doesn't, she's not a very trusting person. And Frank doesn't trust Amy, so he strip ties her, tapes over her mouth, both when he sleeps and when he leaves. And when he leaves, it's like supposed to be, you know, basically a, a joke. Like, yeah, um, I think we're supposed to find it funny that Frank keeps strip tying, mouth taping Amy, which is very uncomfortable. Women's pain and fear have been played for laughs in a lot of movies and shows. So just, yeah. So the way that Billy gets the name Jigsaw is that they refer to him getting his memories back as building the Jigsaw. Not bad. Um, you know, it's like, what was the Warzone one? Like, he's looking at a, a Jigsaw being like, a, like an ad, which I never, like, I always thought, like, okay, that doesn't look as much like an ad as it just looks like you, you kind of had to, to force in the, like, anyway... Um, 
And it was supposed to be that a kid saw, yeah, some kids saw him, most of them freaked out, but one of them didn't, so he asked him why, and he said, you look just like a jigsaw. And, yeah, we see Billy may not have his memories, but he does still have his rage. I will say, it is pretty convenient that Frank happened to be in the bar when Amy needed help, and like other convenient writing in these Marvel Netflix shows, I do think they could have made it less convenient. You know, um... Let's see. Yeah, Amy suggests he was looking for something to do since he saved her. Have it be that he actually does look for someone to save, and that's how he finds Amy. Like, um, police radio, maybe, you know, or, or some kind of just... Maybe... Yeah, it's obvious. It's a little bit more difficult because they're trying to keep a low profile. But maybe... Yeah, maybe instead of just, like, randomly be, randomly being in a bar at the same time as Amy, you know, same exact bar, same exact time, maybe have it be that he is, like, trying to find... May, yeah, maybe he... Let's see. What if maybe he was looking for Konchevsky and then he finds out, oh, Konchevsky was just... Uh, you know, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, so, you know, as he's looking for Konchevsky, he finds out, you know, if, if you know, yeah, he finds someone who's like, I don't know where Konchevsky is, but, I mean, I hear that this girl, Amy, is supposed to report back to him really soon, you know, here's a picture of Amy, um... I have her phone number so you can, uh, uh, cell phone number so you can trace, although I realize, I, I don't think she did have a cell phone at the start, of, but since that would make it easy, yeah, yeah, because she specifically uses, like, the, the, um, the old-timey, uh, uh, coin phone, I forget what they're called, uh, in the, in the bar, if I recall, so, but, but yeah, you know, something like that, so that it was, like, oh, he's, he's looking for, yeah, yeah, Make it that he's looking for someone to kill, and then he finds someone to protect instead. Instead of it being that, oh, he's just going from place to place, and, like, randomly. Like, it is ridiculous. If you think, like, of all the places in America that, the you know, I, I, I'm pretty sure there's more than one bar in America. And, like, just happens to be, you know, the same exact time and place just yeah now let's see yeah so we see billy dreams of glass blood and the skull so his dreams are doing double duty since the skull is not currently on frank's chest which a number of fans despise about the show let's see and we see billy already forgot that he took tylenol just minutes ago let's see and John expresses that he doesn't think technology is a miracle. Maybe it wouldn't be so bad if the world stopped functioning without it. And... Let's see... Yeah, and Amy points a gun at Frank, but doesn't fire. Honestly, I thought that he had removed the clip or something, but... Yeah. Um, I mean, it does... It, it tells us where she is, like, emotionally and mentally. She's not ready to shoot someone who helped her, but she's also not ready to not, like, she's, she still doesn't really completely trust him, so, yeah. And Marlene and the others attack, now using silenced up machine guns, but Frank, you know, he made a hole in the wall with a crowbar, went through it, and that's why it was so important for him to get that specific room. It wasn't for the twin beds, as we thought. It's, it's great, because... When he's just in said, look, I need that room, like, you know, oh, twin beds, you know, yeah, okay, he's not gonna, he doesn't want to share a bed with a teenage girl, obviously, that's super creepy, but, you know, the, the, like, ultimately, probably, he would have just, if, if, if not for, you know, if the, if the better room had only one bed, and a couch or something, he'd sleep on the couch, but, you know, we, we yeah, we don't really, stop and think about that before the the you know but yeah it's you know he he could make a hole in the wall and get into another room which was empty 
so he's not risking anybody's life, but also not in the room when they bust down the door and start shooting, you know. And Amy tries driving off, but the sheriff and others show up, arresting all three of them. Amy lies to the sheriff, really laying it on thick. She's she's good. Like, she is really good at lying to just, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, like, it is... Again, like, at this point, Amy is willing to drive away and leave Frank behind. Let's see. That brings us to episode three, Trouble the Water. And, yeah, we open on John in church. We see he, you know, he used to be, like, a Nazi. You two married? You sound married. And John has the power cut. What do you mean he cut the power? He's a pilgrim. And Amy keeps the five dollars and actually manages to get a coke. Love seeing an assault on Precinct 13. Rio Bravo Punisher episode. And true to assault on Precinct 13, Ogden is killed in the car, or, or attacked in the car as he tries getting away. That's a wound. And Amy pretends to help Ogden, but she was just getting the keys. But later, she does give him back the $5. So, yeah, I really appreciate these little bits of characterization for her. Love seeing Frank unleashed against John's forces. Really cool when the Molotov is shot. Yeah, I might not... I'm, I'm, I don't know if I'm going to call out every single action. Every single action scene this entire season, both seasons, awesome. You know, so if I... If I don't mention one, it's not that I didn't think it was awesome. And Madani shows up in a helicopter, and yeah, she makes a good entrance. Let's see. And yeah, she's going to fly Frank and Amy to New York as the episode closes. It is perhaps kind of convenient that Frank and Amy are just going to be allowed to leave with no official record that they were there. Yes, I understand why, you know, maybe that was their last get out of jail free. Just, yeah, I, uh, it, it's kind of, yeah, um, you know, a lot of the time, the things Punisher does can't be traced to him for one reason or another. Maybe he, you know, maybe everybody that he interacted with was dead. This is a case where not all of them are dead. He's not going to kill the cops. And it would be really harsh if the episode actually had Marlene and the others kill all the cops. So instead, they have to do this, and it's just kind of silly. Yeah. So far, it's Frank and Amy on the run, experiencing complications along the way. So it's a bit like Universal Soldier 1, the Terminator, loving it. And that, may, that brings us to... Episode 4, Scar Tissue. Rick with the big dick t-shirt provokes Billy. And then he thinks that a switchblade is enough. And Billy's like, I need your clothes, your boots, and your switchblade. I did kind of like, you know, he's he's like, oh, look at uh, Edward Scissorhands here. Because his face, that is like, they really should have called him Edward Scissorhands. It's, you know, scissor. Yeah, scissor hands instead of jigsaw, because that just fits so much more. Anyway, I guess that was them acknowledging, okay, yeah, he doesn't really, his face really doesn't look like a jigsaw at all. And let's see. I like the intercutting of Madani talking to Frank and Amy, lying to her boss about them. This place looks like it belongs to a serial killer, and it cuts to a wide shot that does give off Patrick Bateman vibes. And Amy hides under the bed and cries. You know, and we, yeah, we see she does have issues. It's not, you know, that's part of why she is the way she is. She, yeah. Uh, uh, she pushes people away because she's afraid they'll leave her. And we get a flashback to Billy when the mask was pale before he drew a jigsaw on it. And Madani tells Frank about Billy. Walk, talk, and take shit. What, all at once? 
Frank and Madani play a little game of, I know you couldn't shoot Billy, but what about me? And let's see. Yeah, we get a flashback, Amy hiding under the bed. She figured the, she'd lay down where it's safe, under the bed. And Amy slaps Frank for locking her in the room. I appreciate he does listen to her instead of just get angry at her. You know, that's also when he sees, no, she's she's scared. You know, she, like, she, um, you know, she's not just like, ah, uh, what's the word? Like, um, ah, uh, what's the word? You know, he thinks that she's just being difficult for no good reason, but no, she really is, you know, she's, she's scared. And, right, Amy mentioned she took pictures, that's what that's about. And Madani goes to Arthur's house hoping to find Billy there, but Arthur's dead, Billy's gone, so she shoots Brett instead. No more running. Yes, less staying. And Dr. Dumont lets in Billy and then realizes he must have killed someone. I agree that Billy probably couldn't get far with so much blood on his shirt, but he is wearing a jacket, so presumably he just opened the jacket right before asking to be let in, although that's also pretty weird. And, you know, yeah, she needs to save someone. She couldn't save her father, so, yeah. So she lets him in more ways than one. Episode 5, One-Eyed Jacks. And yeah, the episode opens with Amy proving she can keep hustling Frank with three Carmonti even after he knows the, the trick. So I guess those are the One-Eyed Jacks. Let's see. And like Billy, Madani is still having nightmares, very tense ones. And, yeah, and this is the first time we see Dr. Ramon's scars. And I guess those are supposed to be scars from childhood. At first I thought they were, like, you know, self-harm scars. But, yeah, I, I think it, uh, yeah. And Amy steals Madonna's credit card. Say something, Frank. I'm giving up on you. And John self-flagellates, and we see, you know, that's how he got rid of the Nazi tattoos. Very fun montage of Amy dressing up fancy, pretending to be Madani to the mirror, ordering takeout while a rap song plays. And Turk is told Koncheski is dead in Chicago, and Frank does nothing as he sees him attacked. They're going to have to kill me first. Well, I'm pretty sure they can slot you in for that. Frank goes to the gym because he's the Punisher. Even there, he gets in a fight. Really badass fight, too, using weights, weight staffs as weapons. And the big guy takes quite a beating, but Frank manages to get a small but heavy weight and uses it as a boxing glove. The guy ends up looking like that one guy with one eye from the Hills of Eyes. That was... Wow, that was brutal. And... Right, and we see Billy and Jake meet and get along. And, and yeah, we see Dr. Lamont go up to the window. It's clear there's some trauma there. Amy realizes who certain someone is, and the episode ends on... John killing the Russians remaining at the gym. I don't love Frank and Amy taking advantage of Madani, but I do appreciate that early in the episode, Amy says, when is that woman ever happy? Later in the episode, Frank says it too, so they're bonding. And, you know, when Frank says it, like, Amy even, like, smiles or chuckles or something. So, you know. And, I mean, at the end of the day, like, Madani is also taking advantage of them. And, you know, she has... You know, it's not like she she's going to be in credit card, debt, credit card debt for the rest of her life or something. It's like pizzas and clothing and such, you know. They didn't buy, like, a jet plane. Next time. Episode 6, 
Nakazat, if that's how you pronounce that. And let's see. Yeah, Frank wants to kick down the door. Amy says not to. And then after they're in, she says it's the guy that let them in to. Like, I, I quite like, you know, it's, you know. Let me just kick the door down. Look at the door. You're not going to be able to kick it down, you know. And then when they get in, gee, mister, that's a very heavy door. I bet no one can kick that down. I kind of, I like when it, when she lays it on thick. There's male gaze in the pan across Amy's body, but it's it, the POV of the guy that they managed to trick because she's dressed like that. So that does help. And Frank beats up the guy since he lets pedos work there. Let's see. And, and, you know, I appreciate, like, Amy actually does know how to, uh, what's it called, develop film. And I, I realize, you know, for her job, for, for sometimes having to take pictures of, the, you know, yeah, it's really good to, to be able to, yeah. And Amy can tell that Frank wishes he killed the guy, so she says... You could burn it down, and then they do. That was funny. Like this, you know, and you see the the smoke, you know, black smoke billowing out, and the guy like runs out. Just, just, yeah, because like it doesn't appear that he actually killed someone, you know. So yeah, although he did kill that guy that he got information from in Daredevil season two, because of pedo implications. So yeah, let's. See. And Curtis tells the woman he's in bed with that he has a huge rod, rodent problem. Amy and Frank talk about how to think about his dead daughter. Frank tells Amy, a gun without training is useless. Personally, I prefer pointing out that a gun without training is more likely to hurt yourself or someone you care about than anyone you mean to shoot, but I still appreciate it. And Billy looks at DeMont's notes. She doesn't use the term toxic masculinity, but that's basically what she's talking, they're writing about. Good detail that John hates the noise of the city. And Amy reveals the pictures, to, you know, that was really great. Like, she walks right into the restaurant and, like, you know, just opens, yeah, I think, like, opens a menu and one of the pictures are inside, you know, and, and he's like... I thought those were no longer in season. And, and she's like, if you know where to look, or some, something like that, you know. And he sends his people after her, but she was prepared to change disguise to look like a schoolgirl, which they made sure to put in the trailer. Again, that was kind of creepy, male gaze. Yeah, I realized there's a limitation on what costume she could believably pull off, but still. And Madani clocked John in the restaurant, but she doesn't arrest him. He asks what she would even arrest him for. And that's how you know this is a piece of fiction. Because obviously, in real life, like, she works for law enforcement in America. She would arrest him for resisting arrest. Let's see. And, yeah, I, I gotta say, I didn't... I, I don't remember his name. I think his initials are NP. Explains the photos, talks about loving his daughter. So Frank doesn't kill him, only tells him to leave the country. Now, uh, in case anyone is unsure why the photos were on film rather than on digital, digital can't be copied and moved. That wouldn't work as well for the blackmail. Like, how can you trust that it will be kept away from the, from the public if they're digital? But, you know, like, essentially, the idea is, after a while, the, you know, they give the negatives back to, um, I guess, Anderson and Eliza. Yeah, you know, that, that's the idea. You can't, you know, yeah, if it's digital, like, they could have it somewhere. And I, the idea is, once you hand the, the negatives back, they don't hurt you. If you have it on digital, they're probably going to keep going after you, you know. Let's see. And it's also, you know, if you have it, if you just have um, uh, photo negatives, like... Let's say that Amy had got, uh, actually, yeah, yeah, she gets arrested on at least one occasion in this season. And, you know, they're like, well, you know, they're, they're photo negatives. Like, what are we supposed to do with that? If we don't, if you don't have a dark room and you're not going to put through, and, you, and they're not supposed to do that if they don't think it's dangerous. They, they can't just look at people's stuff just because they've arrested them if it's not you know, possibly dangerous. Obviously, if they, you know, if Amy had a gun on her, they had to, you know, to take care of that, obviously. But, yeah, um, 
you know, imagine if they get her and she has like, um, the, the, yeah, digital, you know, I have, and, and if they think she maybe has evidence of a crime in there, they can look at it and now they're implicated. So yeah, I, I really appreciate it. It was, it was wh whoever wrote, whoever came up with the idea that they're supposed, that, that it's analog and not digital, digital photography deserves a raise. And yeah, Billy and the veterans get back the car. One of them suggests they rob a bank. And let's see. Yeah, that is it for that episode, which brings us to episode seven, one bad day. And, yeah, so this one, you know, we opened one year ago. Madani debriefed after being shot in the head by Billy. Excellent acting by Amber Rose Riva and Mary Elizabeth Mastrantonio. A lot of the scene is shot in close-up of Madani's face. Very effective. And we see not long after that Madani continues to have flashbacks to Billy both him hurting her and them having sex, which is obviously the fact that she has memories of the same person doing both of those things is a huge part of the trauma. And Billy and Dr. Dumont have sex, stimulating the scars. And then when Billy leaves, she goes to the window. But yeah, you know, the, it, um, the, the, um, I guess if he if Billy had survived this season and there were a third season, he would have found another young woman who works like you know who has like this really professional job to seduce and then like actually yeah I I really appreciate it. he doesn't actually betray her like he you know he's he's kind of hot and cold with her sometimes. But he does actually develop feelings for her, which at the end of the day, like, the way he talked about Madani to uh, some of the people he worked for in season one, it seemed like, you know, maybe he had some feelings for her, but it was also a mission for him. And he was, you know, getting off on taking advantage of her sexually and such. So, yeah, I really appreciate it. Like, in this one, you know, by the end of the season, she is still alive, though he dies thinking she died. You know, yeah, he dies, he he never, I don't think he betrayed her. If, please, if I, if I misremember, please put it in the, in the comments, but ultimately, like, they, you know, they, yeah, there's some manipulation, they, they both manipulate each other, but, yeah, he does actually develop feelings for her. A lot of Billy's screen time in these first episodes, you know, is him trying to remember what he lost and cope. And some people really didn't like that. I think it was a good choice, especially as we see that even without remembering very much, he does still turn, make, you know, turn towards making awful, evil choices. So that was a huge part of him, something that he doesn't forget. You know, he, he doesn't even remember what he did to Frank and his family. He, there's a lot of blind spots in his memory but you know he's still like you know the, there's that there's um es essentially he can choose to accept his pain and go to therapy go to group and and you know slowly over over a long time you know, recover his memories and and just you know accept being basically a patient. You know, not not really having a job, for example. That's a choice that Doctor Dumont. You know, she she keeps saying it's something you can do. You know, it's a it's a possibility for you. And you know, the more as as he gets a chance to choose you know, basically becoming a gangster, that's what he chooses, you know, and yeah, uh, I, I think it's more interesting than if he just, 
Like, if he remember, I don't even know what they would do with him this season if he remembered the the stuff that that Frank did. I I guess. Let's see if he remember. Yeah, yeah, because like basically everything. Like after a while, he realizes that Frank was is the skull in his nightmares, and he finds out what there was. And then there's the bit with you know he he tries to. You know, he tricks Frank into thinking that he accidentally killed women, that that Frank killed women. Um, but yeah, yeah, you know, basically everything in this season is defined by that. And yeah, um, I don't think it would have been as interesting, you know, if just, yeah. Um, let me know, let me, yeah, yeah, uh, uh, hit me up in the comments, let me know, what do you think they should have done uh, with Billy this season? I'll, I'm interested in hearing it, or reading it. Maybe I'll have the, the, um, T TTS reader read it aloud to me so I can hear it. Madani can't get an ID on John. I like the excitable lab tech. She's just jazzed about being on the show, man. She actually, yeah, she only got like a couple of scenes. I really wish that she, I, I mean, I get it. You know, they actually, yeah, did they ever find, did Madani ever find the original identity of, of John? I'm not entirely sure that, I guess she, yeah, anyway, but, but yeah. Yeah, you know, and and the lab tech is like it just we're so happy that you know powerful young uh, American Israeli ah uh, wait Iran I can't believe I yeah I'm pretty sure she's like American Irani not Israeli there's pretty significant difference I'm just gonna double check to make sure Ruby Rose wait do I have her name wrong I'm almost certain that. Amber Rose, Reba, not Ruby. Um, so, uh, okay, uh, right, on the show, she's part, um, Iranian. In real life, her father's Kenyan Indian and her mother's parents were Polish Jews. In her career, she has played more than ten different nationalities, yeah. She, yeah, born and grew up in, or, yeah, born in, in London. I haven't seen any, you know, but yeah, I'll, I'll bet if I heard her, she probably has a British accent, and I'd be like, wow, that sounds completely unlike the, yeah. Um, let's see, but, but yeah, you know, um, I like the lab tech, I like that, you know, the first time, you know, Madani, you know, like, like the lab tech is trying to say, no, I, I get it, I know what you mean, you know, but Madani still spells it out as, as a, just, yeah, and, and, you know, she's like, okay, so, what, what is this, and Madani's like, it's, it's, you know, confidential, okay, but I've been waiting my entire life to be asked to do this, so please let me know, you know, and, and Madani's like, okay, just, and, and leaves, you know, and, and she's like, you know, and the, yeah, this other scene of her, she's like, you know, yeah, she says the thing about, you know, we're all so happy that you're the, the SAC and, you know, um, my mom says I don't have a filter. Yeah, it sounds like she's right. Yeah, um, I still live with her. I'm 30. I think she wants me out of the house. <laughs> Let's see. Right, and yeah, Frank is interrogating Jake. He tries to intimidate him by doing that trick where the knife goes in between the fingers but he like misses and then he's way too ashamed to admit that he made a mistake so he just goes with it. Very like masculine energy on that. And Frank triggers Billy, manages to shoot several of the vets who helped do the robbery. And the episode ends. Yeah, that, that was really, really cool. <laughs> um... I haven't yet had, you know, I, I watched that several days ago. I haven't yet had a nightmare where Frank Castle shouts, Russo! But I'm, it's, it's, it's probably just a matter of time. 
And that brings us to episode eight, my brother's keeper. Super cool seeing the rest of the action scene in the opening of this episode, Billy trying to shoot Frank. And he continues to be a threat for longer because he has larger clips so he can fire for longer without reloading. That's why we need more gun control. So I really appreciate the episode having that, you know, because there's so much American fiction where just no, nobody reloads. They just keep firing forever. But yeah. But we see him reload, um, I think, two or three times in the scene. And Billy to demand, Krista, please open the door. Well, since you asked so politely. And Amy's waiting for Frank to come home, so she practices reloading the sawn off. And when he comes home, she's eager to practice the move that he taught her. And he, let's see. And his anger at that is, as Curtis points out, magnified by Frank failing to shoot Billy. And Brett goes to Madani. Since Curtis didn't shoot him, he feels like there's something missing from his life. I like to think that every time Brett shows up at Madani's apartment, that's why. And Curtis points out Frank is acting like Billy. And now Billy feels like he can't trust anyone. He freaks out Dr. at, at Dr. DeMont, in part because therapy triggers the lizard brain. We feel like we have to defend against it. Yeah, she really, like, she keeps going, you know, pursuing a romance with him for a long time after he does really messed up things. And Amy almost shot Curtis because Frank didn't tell him he had to announce himself. And then, and, you know, and, and Curtis is like, yeah, that sounds like Frank. And Billy tells the vets they could do a hundred times better than the robbery today. And we close on Frank at Maria's grave. And... Next episode is episode 9, Fluster Cluck, which is what you have when you can't swear freely, which ap apparently the F word is where it, um, where the, where the Marvel Netflix shows draw the line. Which, considering some of the graphic violence they show, you'd be like, no, 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 you know, sure, decapitation by car door but the f word i mean that's kind of rude and billy has sex with demont it's intercut with a montage of billy and the vets doing raids so he's becoming the gangster that he is in the comics so in real life there are right-wing religious extremists trying to get power without being questioned so that element of the season is quite relevant and John puts a $5 million bounty on Frank and Amy, and Amy only finds out after leaving. So, yeah. I am very hard to kill. So you die hard. Let's see. And, yeah. Amy goes to stay with Chantel, who gives her up. Frank comes for her and kills the guys there, but she uses the move to get the gun, and it works. I killed him. No, you shot him. The bullets killed him. But yeah, that was also a really, really cool scene. And again, you have these great, like, tactical, like, let's see. Uh, they realize that there's someone there, you know, Frank. And they know that they can't, you know, he can't be below them because they, or, or in the, on the stairs. Because they went, you know, they started on the ground floor, got up to this floor, only using the stairs. They would have passed him, he would have attacked them. So he must be above or in a room. It's, it's, yeah, really appreciate, you know, that's the... So yeah, like I said, you know, put some of the Rambo movies up behind and, and Commando and, and such. Fun movies, for sure. And the first Rambo movie is legitimately an excellent movie, but... I've, I've always, it always bothered me how bad the tactics are by bad guys in a lot of these movies. So I really appreciate that that's not the case here. That brings us to episode 10. The Dark Hearts of Men. And we open on a flashback where first Billy and then Frank are beaten by soldiers. And it helps explain why later in the episode Frank is able to get out of a similar situation. And that Billy knew that he could, because he does remember this military stuff. 
so that Frank would not realize that the real trap was the women. You know, he was trying to get him really angry and lower his guard. And I appreciate that we know early on that Billy knows where Frank and Curtis are, so we're basically trying to figure out the entire episode, what is Billy's plan? You know, why doesn't he just shoot them from, you know, because they don't know that he's there. And, you know, yeah. And John manages to take out the other Nazis. That was legitimately, yeah. I'm impressed that somehow this season does not feel as divided as Daredevil Season 2, which also had multiple different story threads. So far, you know, yeah, basically, um, uh, uh, Billy and John, I'm not sure they're ever in the same place. Not, not even once. But it doesn't feel like it's as separate as the Yakuza and Punisher in Daredevil Season 2. And Madani and Krista discuss ethics, but we realize later it's a ploy so Krista can learn how to break Frank for Billy. At first it looks like John is going to hurt, maybe even kill people inside the noisy party hotel room, but instead he himself gets really drunk and receives oral until he thinks that that's his wife. And we have the the uh, lover... Wait, what's... It? Uh, no, no. Uh, mistress... Madonna, uh, thing. Um, let's see. Yeah, and, you know, Billy talks to the vets, preparing them for frightening Frank. He shot three of our brothers, and he gave me... What, Peach Cobbler? And... Yeah, you know, Kurt believes the women are leaving, evidently not all of them, and Frank is led into a trap, cut with knives, beaten seeing the mask in flashes of light, basically recreating the nightmare that Billy has about him, but with the other mask. Or, or the, yeah, mask instead of, uh, skull. Legitimately emotionally affecting when Frank realizes, or believes, he accidentally killed women. And the cops are there. What do we do? What any good citizen does when they are burglars. We call the cops. That brings us to episode 11, The Abyss. This would have been a really good time to have a Mary Elizabeth Mastrantonio scene since she was in the movie The Abyss as well, if I recall. And, yeah, we find out Rebecca is dead, and Eliza doesn't tell John right away. And Karen shows up, and she talks her way into the room as usual. That was, that was such a great, like, you know, at first the cop is, like, not having it. And she's like, you see, if you, you know, if Frank is denied counsel, that might mean that he would get off you know, they, they declare a mistrial, and he would walk, and I'm sure that the cops would hate that. You know, just so nicely done. Let's see. And Frank empathizes with the women he thinks he killed like he did his kids. Who punishes you? And Amy, pretending to be a nurse, even charms the cop. And I like the, you know, she even makes sure, no, no, look, I'm in the system and everything. You know, she... We yeah, probably she put herself in this. You know, she hacked the the database and put herself in the system or something. And yeah, we learn Frank didn't kill the women. Billy did. Frame job, close range. And Dumont explains to Billy about the window. Her father was a Vietnam veteran. He jumped out the window with her in his arms, and ever since she has been trying to save people. And, and that is, you know, a, a lot of trauma starts with something of, um, yeah, you know, a, a trauma that is endured in childhood. And then, you know, yeah, some people spend the rest of their lives trying to deal with that. Love seeing the, the three women helping Frank, including getting him out of the hospital where Brett takes over, asks Madani to toss her gun since... He knows if not, she'll shoot him. And, yeah. Uh, Ed wanted to wear Karen's shoes. Clearly, Madani thinks he fits the name Creepy Ed. 
I think we might be meant to as well, since he's not as masculine like so many other men on the show coded to be appealing. You know, there's nothing wrong with him having a foot fetish. And, like, if not for his help, they wouldn't have gotten Frank out of the hospital. Now, I enjoyed this episode a lot, but I feel like they wouldn't have made it if they didn't have to make 13 episodes this season. Like, at the start, Frank is in custody. At the end, he is back in custody after being free for only minutes. Like, the only things that happen in this episode are Karen meeting Amy, which doesn't actually lead to anything, Frank learning that he didn't kill the women, Billy in the audience learning the truth about DeMont and the window, and John finding out that Rebecca is dead. All of these things could have been accomplished in other episodes. Which brings us to episode 12, Collision Course. A lot of needle drops in this episode 3, I think. And, yeah, we open on Brett intending to drive Frank to jail forever, but then John shows up with a submachine gun, Madani tries to stop him. Tense, fun, exciting, absolutely love it. And Dumont calls Medina to get information, cementing Madani's suspicion that she has been feeding Billy information. And Frank kidnaps the senator. That really is... Okay, yeah, you know what, that's him getting more extreme. That That's not something... Like, because he... He knows, I think, that the senator, Senator David himself, doesn't actually... Or, no, wait, yeah, yeah, at the time he did think that David was in on it. And John finds Curtis in the mobile home looking for Amy. Curtis comes up with some good lies, you know, he claims, you know, because John is like, why did Madani drive to here? Because, you know, he used her GPS to find the place. And Curtis is like, come on, we both know why, you know. Booty call, you know, and that's that's legitimately, like, <laughs> yeah. Um, let's see. And, you know, he doesn't, he, he claims he doesn't know about any Amy or Frank, but John sees through them. And Amy shows up. There's a fight. Very cool. I honestly, I would have loved, there should be like a, a blooper or something. Because, you know, he's like, I don't know an Amy. You know, if, if the, you know, the door opens, Amy comes in. Curtis, if, if Curtis was able to just deadpan, who are you? Because <laughs> it wouldn't even have mattered at that point. But it would have been, like, yeah, I, th I think that would have been very funny. So, so yeah, basically, John is a young man who was radicalized and then de-radicalized. And because of the people who de-radicalized him, he's now dipping back into his past, showing that it's extremely important who de-radicalizes someone. And that old habits die hard, which I maintain should be the title of the sixth Die Hard movie, which ought to be about a ghost suit. And... Let's see. Yeah, and we see, you know, Amy hid in John's car and grabs the shotgun, goes up to the door, and, you know, knock on the door, but that's Madani for DeMond. That was a great, like, because I was like, oh, gonna shoot? Oh, no, never mind. Different. And, yeah, she reels, she knows the truth, and they fight intense. I did really expect the boiling hot water in the kettle to come into play, and, you know, then I thought, oh, maybe it will in the finale, but, yeah. No, I don't know, maybe, maybe, I, I guess it's like red herring tea. <laughs> that sounds positively disgusting. Anyway, um, tea. Anyway, and she shoves her out the window, and I can't help but wonder if the reason DeMont, who clearly makes a good amount of money, chose to live not on the ground floor, was to to be able to relive that trauma over and over now and you know yeah uh um dumont lands you know just you know and and billy comes up you know he was over to the the flower salesman he's like do you have anything blue blue and he and it's like i mean i was a kind of more purple but i guess you might be okay with that you know and he goes and she's like lying there on the ground is this because the flowers aren't blue 
but the the yeah you know and he looks up and madani's standing there which she had no idea that billy was so so close uh, yeah now i do think it is pretty messed up that billy is a problem because frank didn't kill him like we really don't need the message in the wake of all these deadly hate crimes where people are specifically killing members of minority groups because they feel that if they don't things will get worse I think what they should have done, and I realize this is completely counter to the comic, when Billy woke up from the coma, it should have been a good thing that he was spared. Maybe he becomes an ally of Frank's. Let's see. Yeah, yeah, let's say that, you know, he wakes... Yeah, he wakes up, he remembers everything. And, you know, he... Yeah, through Curtis, he comes into contact with Frank again. And he... I don't know exactly how, but he somehow proves beyond any... Yeah, maybe they maybe they never give him a gun. Maybe they never give him a chance to betray them. And he, you know... Yeah, Frank says, the only way I'll ever work with you again is if you have no chance of betraying me. And, you know, Billy, like, looks him in the eyes and says, that's fair. And, yeah, he spends the entire season being, you know... Yeah, helping Frank. But, yeah, I know... Completely counter to the comic. So, that brings us to the final episode. The Whirlwind. And, yeah, you know, we open on Madani struggling to get her gun back. And fight between her and Billy... And, yeah, I've, you know, I appreciate, like, it was actually, you know, yeah, um, he strangles her so much that she passes out, and then he passes out because of the pain, you know, he, yeah. Let's see, and, um... Yeah, the, the, you know, we hear that uh, Eliza doesn't think that John should come home because it's gone too far. You know, if, yeah, if he comes home, people are going to come investigating and, you know, might ruin their chances for David. Uh, if, if I recall, they want him to become president eventually, so, yeah. And Frank calls them and gets a confession from Anderson and later confronts him with it, so that was quite, uh, yeah. It was kind of funny how they kept going over, you know, is that a threat or a fact? David is bleeding. That's a fact. And let's see. Yeah, so, you know, Mad Madani did survive. And Brett points out all of the things that she has done to help. Closing on, of course, you haven't shot me for days now. And... Yeah, it's it's a really great fight between Frank and John in the in the hotel room. You know, Amy um, gets him there, and yeah, you know, both of them are just exhausted. Yeah, like Frank spends a good chunk of this season just like you know, barely recovering from all the the wounds like it's it's like half the season is that one episode of daredevil season one where claire fixes him up and then he goes out to fight again and yeah you know uh, john manages to get amy and frank fights the elevator cops which is also quite a, a fun fight. I like the bit where it like cuts to outside and then the doors close. Just yeah, it's 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 an oldie but a goodie. And let's see. Yeah, you know, uh, Billy finds this doctor who, you know, yeah, he's gonna remove the the bullets, maybe suture. You know, he's like, you need a hospital. G is W. That's what they call it. And, you know, he later wakes up in the dumpster without cash, no sutures, and, and he laughs because he realizes, yeah, you know, that's... Because, like, are any of his... I guess they're all dead. Well, yeah, Jake doesn't want to work with him anymore. I think maybe the other... 
Yeah, yeah, uh, the last of Billy's men died. Uh, Frank killed the last of Billy's men right before the apparent um, gunning down of the... Or, or before he apparently shot the women. Let's see. And Amy talks to John about people lying and, you know, starts his wheels turning, realizing he shouldn't be working for Eliza and Anderson. Yeah, actually, yeah, when... when um, when Eliza puts one of the kids on the phone, like, that's basically, ah, uh, wait, is, is it an implicit threat or is it just, like, emotional manipulation? But it, it's, it's at least one of those things. And, yeah, like, let's see. And uh, Curtis returns the lost senator. Always, if, if you find a missing senator, you know, be sure to return him to the authorities. He's not necessarily being missed by anyone, but it's just, the, it's the nice thing to do, you know. And, yeah, John and Frank talk about saving their sons, and, yeah, that was a really great... You know, there's still some fighting, but ultimately, you know, yeah, and I really appreciate, you know, when when Frank has John, you know, he's he's pointing the gun at him, and he's he he could do anything he wanted, you know. He could easily fin. Oh wait, not gun, not gun. Uh, he had the the big metal thing that he, you know, he's threatening to to hit, you know, yeah, to to crush his his head with the the big metal thing at the end of the fight. And John doesn't. He doesn't ask for mercy. He asks for, for himself. He asks for mercy for his sons. Let's see, and, yeah, and, and Amy comes in, you know, pointing a gun at, let's see, I think he's pointing a gun at Ann, no, no, at, yeah, at Eliza, and then he point, then, then she points it at Anderson, and Eliza was about to attack, and Frank shoots Eliza right in front of Anderson, and, yeah, you know, tells him, you, either I, either you die now, or you live with the truth, and that's a really great, you know, yeah, and, let's see, then you have the, um, yeah, you know, he didn't kill John, and the sons, you know, he's reunited with his sons, I will say, you know, the the, um, the death of, of Billy was a bit meh. Uh, overall, I, I really like the, the, you know, the season opener is great, the season as a whole is great, and the season finale is great. But, you know, Frank didn't even really fight um, Billy here at the end. And, you know, he, fight John, he fights John... A couple times, but doesn't end up killing him. I I don't mind, you know. I I'm okay with retiring the trope because, like, for a while it was a trope that oh, you know, the the villain gets to do a big speech before the you know the the um, before the the protagonist takes care of him. Now the trope is he starts to deliver a speech and then he gets shot and it's like okay we've seen it by now you know and uh, let's yeah if i if i give examples i'd be spoiling those movies but yeah um i don't mind too much that it's that kind of death but i really do feel like it would have been a, a good kind of ah uh, let's see should there maybe maybe it should have ended with you know uh, yeah i do appreciate you know he he calls uh, uh, billy calls curtis tells him don't tell the cops i'm here but he tells frank instead uh, you know and he also appreciates you know yeah brought that on myself you know that's you know i betray people all the time now they're betraying me that's you know what goes around comes around uh, you know he didn't um Ah, what's the word? It's not like he just 
Uh, let me go. Ja. Um. Ja. Uh, let's see. I uh, yeah. I think maybe it would have been good if. Uh, let's see. Maybe maybe he goes to. Um, to Dumont's uh, uh, hospital bed. You know, yeah, yeah. Uh, Curtis tells him Dumont is still alive. You know, she's in room something, something, something. And he goes there and, uh, let's see. Well, no, wait. I actually, I kind of like that he never betrays Dumont, though. Um... Ah, let's see. Okay, yeah, so he goes to Dumont's bed, and Frank comes. Yeah, yeah, maybe, maybe, like, um, um, let's see. Yeah, so he, yeah, Frank is like, you're too dangerous to be left alive. And, um, let's see. Yeah, yeah, and, and, um, instead of you know, instead of torturing him this time, he just makes sure that no one can save his life in time, you know, so, so, you know, Billy's like, you're gonna, you're gonna kill me in front of my lover, or, yeah, some, something like that, and Frank just says, you know, I, I don't have to kill you, I just have to, I'll, I'll just, um, it'll be enough for me to watch you die, something like that, you know. Now, uh, let's see that. Yeah, I, I do appreciate that Madani got to fight um, Billy. You know, in, in the... In, yeah, yeah, actually in this episode. But ultimately... And, and I, you know, I appreciate... You know, Madani also really suffered at the hands of Billy. But ultimately, Billy did take more from Frank than he did from Madani. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. Um, let's see. I like that it ends with Amy pursuing her dreams. Uh, you know, the, the marine salvage. I gotta say, when she first said that, I thought she, I thought that was supposed to be, like, a, um, a pun. Like, you know, she realizes that uh, Frank used to be a marine, and she's saving him, so marine salvage, yeah. But apparently she did actually mean it. And, you know, three months later... Madani finds Frank, you know, I, I did like the, the joke, you know, how did you find me, Madani? I'm with the CIA now, Frank. We can find anyone. Yeah, sad but true. And, yeah, you know, he turns down getting a job, you know, because, cause, yeah, she's like, okay, you want to you wanna kill people for a good cause, I can tell you, who to, I'll tell you where to put, point the gun, but instead he guns down some, some gang members, so... You know, I don't know if, like, a third season would have had him retire immediately also, or if he would actually have stayed the Punisher this time, since he's, like, constantly retiring in, in this incarnation of, of the character. Now, uh, let's see. Oh, right. Uh, I... I believe I completely blanked on that, but yeah, here we go. Um, there we go, and there, there. Okay, so, um, yeah, worst to best ranking all of the seasons of the Marvel Netflix shows that I've watched, so the only one I haven't watched is Jessica Jones Season 3. And I love all other than Iron Fist Season 1. So, Iron Fist Season 1, Daredevil Season 2, The Defenders, Punisher Season 1, Punisher Season 2, Iron Fist Season 2, Daredevil Season 3, Luke Cage Season 2, Luke Cage Season 1, Daredevil Season 1, Jessica Jones Season 2, and Jessica Jones Season 1. And worst to best filmed Punisher film as well as Punisher actors performance. I love all other than 89. I'm, I'm kind of close to loving it, but I don't completely love it. 89, 2004, Warzone, Punisher Season 1, Punisher Season 2. Um, I'm probably not going to do a 
straight review of, um, I think it's called Dirty Laundry. Uh, let's see. Oh, wow, there's a bunch of things called Dirty Laundry, apparently. Okay, here we go. Dirty Laundry, Punisher. It's great to see, um, it, you know, I'm a big fan of Adi Shankar and the, the bootleg universe. Um, you know, overall, I'd probably say I, I prefer the the one he did on the, um, yeah, you know, my favorite's the Power Ranger one. It's just so much fun. Uh, then you have the, an, another really great one is the one on Venom. Uh, I think it's called Truth in Journalism or something. The Punisher Dirty Laundry is also quite good. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't have much to say about it. I wish it wasn't a white guy going into a black neighborhood and saving the, you know, model minority from a bunch of, you know, really xenophobically, racistly drawn minorities, um, you know, the, the, uh, the brutality of it is fairly on point for Punisher, uh, not nicely done, although a tad much uh, CGI, um, let's see, I think that is pretty much it, um, I can understand if some people, like, think it's lame that it plays coy with being Punisher until, I think it's only at the very end that, like, you see, oh, you know, he holds up the, the, the kid holds up the, the Punisher skull shirt, you know, uh, I don't mind it, I think it's fine, um, yeah, uh, uh, right now, like, like I said, my favorite is definitely, um, John, I can't believe I'm blanking on his name, um, the, um, okay, I'll find it real quick. There we go. John Bernthal. Uh, but I do still really like, uh, the, um, yeah. Thomas Jane. Um, yeah, that's about what I have. So, so yeah, you know, by now I've done videos on on all i'll probably do the um the review of this show pretty soon maybe today we'll see it'll mostly depend on my back let's see uh right so i have some critic quotes about this season um yeah season two was a frustrating watch the pacing fell off the addition of georgia wiggum as amy didn't quite click all in all the season had less drive i agree less drive uh, the, the rest, I don't really agree. Well, yeah, pacing, again, you know, that's a thing for all of these. Uh, all the villains in here are some form of mirror on Frank Castle. I found that really cool. Uh, where the second outpaces the first is in its aggressive approach to showing Billy Rousseau's slow and painful crawl back to a functioning mental and physical state by piecing himself back together again in the aftermath of his battle with Frank. While the show centers around Frank, the more intriguing storyline lied with Billy. Much of, much like Frank in the first season, Rooster is left to make sense of fragments of memories from his life before the fight, a life that he does not remember. This sets a new light on him as a perceived villain because he's being given a second chance at building life from all that he had done in the past. This growth isn't without limits, without its limits, but it stands to be the more engaging story in comparison to Frank's Franks, whose battle lies with resisting the moniker the world has placed upon him and eventually embracing the monster they all see. Uh, a number of people say Jigsaw isn't ugly enough. Uh, I have a couple of theories. Maybe the actor wasn't willing to be made ugly. Uh, I have I know almost nothing about him. I think he does an incredible job in both seasons of this. Apparently, he's like a singer also. And like I've seen some music videos of his stuff. You know, he's good. He's talented. Um, it's pretty clear that part of his appeal is his good looks, and, you know, maybe he was afraid that this would, and I don't really blame him for that, although, if it is that, I would maybe say, I mean, if you took the job, like, once you take the job, you know, it, it's pretty well known that Billy Russo is supposed to end up as the, as, as Jigsaw with a really messed up face, you know. Um, let's see, could also be the amount of time it took to apply the makeup, since he basically has to wear it most days, not the ones he's only in the mask he drew on, of shooting the season. Maybe they didn't budget that in. Maybe they didn't want to spend that long in the makeup chair. 
Um, you know, I, I'd be more upset if it didn't look so great in the Warzone movie. Like, if I, you know, the next time I really badly want to see a live-action Jigsaw, I'll just put on the movie, you know. Uh, right, this is from Reddit. The real reason Jigsaw's face only had a few scars, probably due to Netflix not wanting to lose casual viewers. Everyone wanted Russo to have a mangled face, like in Warzone, but you would have watched and been invested regardless. Look at what happened with The Walking Dead and, spoiler, one of the most gruesome deaths in TV, and it immediately drove away a large subset of fans who thought it was too much, even for a show known for its gory deaths. So just keep in mind, Netflix had the budget to make Jigsaw as ugly and messed up as they wanted, but it would have probably took people out of it or even be too distracting for the remaining viewers. A believable love scene between Jigsaw and the therapist would have also been hard to pull off. Uh, missing from the action is... I'm gonna try. Eben Moss Backrocks. Micro, which is a shame because he had real chemistry with John Bernthal in the first season. However, this season doesn't suffer for his loss as much as it could thanks to the introduction of Georgia Wiggum as Amy Bendix, a street smart grifter who is in way over her head with some really bad people. When she bumps into Frank, she plays a large part in helping him find another way to fight. However, her real appeal is filling the chemistry void left by Micro, being roughly the age Frank's daughter would have would be had it not been for the whole carousel thing. She helps Shepard along the Punisher's journey from being a pure mission of vengeance to that of a repeat crime fighter by accepting him for the killer that he is. In doing so, she makes the decision to constantly f uh, the fight to feel less like a betrayal of the life he once had and more of an extension of who Castle was all along. Pepper in the return of Jason R. Moore as Cordis Hoyle, and you've got a fun, albeit twisted, little crew to follow. Uh, hold on. I'm just going to make sure. There we go. And there. Um, yeah, uh, some, some say, you know, the comic book Frank loves killing. The show version doesn't. He's at times conflicted. What works in the comic book doesn't necessarily translate well to live action. Today, you have to be very careful about inspiring copycats. You know, I... I Watched a bunch of videos about Punisher in research for this, and every so often I make the mistake of, like, you know, my comment section is golden. I really appreciate you guys commenting, but a lot of YouTube comment sections are dumpster fires. And every so often, if you, if you look through videos on the Punisher, you'll find people expressing the point of view that... If the Punisher did what, if the Punisher was a real person, not fictional, it would work. And that's just such a big, you, you really can't have people actually, it, it's fine to, to believe that. But if you have enough people believing that, then every so often there's going to be one that snaps and goes out and tries to do it. It is important to, you know, there... There are things that are very important, including protecting people, stopping dangerous criminals, and maintaining law and order. And these things are not well served by vigilantism. If you think that the system doesn't currently work, and I think a strong case could be made that at times it does not, you know, rich people are getting away with their crimes all the time. The system doesn't work as well as it should. But you gotta work, you gotta try to reform the system. You can't go outside the system, and, and, and I realize, you know, part of, like, the entire Marvel Netflix line, part of it is the catharsis of seeing vigilantes do what, you know, we can't do in real life, but it's extre like, the Punisher is very easy to imitate, sadly, and that's, you, you really have to be careful with live-action adaptations. Now, when the Punisher was created, and for a lot of the comics, the idea of a man exacting brutal revenge with guns, killing the people responsible for the death of his loved ones, was considerably less problematic than today. Back then, some were upset at the violence that the comics depicted, because they felt the people reading them were too young to see such things, but there were a lot of movies featuring characters like that with... Uh, and yeah, when a character is idolized by American police, and many hate crimes in America are motivated by fear of 
being replaced by immigrants, which for those who haven't heard about that absurd conspiracy theory, is treated by the people who peddle it and also those who actually believe it as an existential threat. So while it is not killing as revenge, it is killing in order to survive. So basically today, if you're going to do The Punisher, a great way to limit how much negative attention you're going to get for it, you know, maybe you question how much, you know, maybe you, qu yeah, question if the, is his, if his methods are actually effective since in real life vigilantism tends to not be and it also very frequently hits the wrong people which you know yeah i i would like for for a live action adaptation to really struggle more with that there have been a couple of attempts but i don't think they've quite nailed it yet uh, maybe have Frank re recognize some of the xenophobic reasons for doing it and have him openly criticize that. Have him turn his attention away from street criminals that he's known for targeting, like in comics, and to groups of people that are actually the cause of a lot of misery. Like, maybe, you know, but then, you know, obviously you can't still have... Yeah, the moment you have him killing, it's problematic, but... Yeah, like, um, one of the comics, it's not Frank, but there's a copycat who and and he does kill and that's where i take issue with it but he targets like corporate america you know and he's like okay so you knew that this was going to kill people and you still did it because profits you know i think maybe having frank do something like that but you know if he's not killing people then he's not really the punisher so or, or at the very least brutalizing people and really killing people is what he's known for so it is just difficult now. Something that we haven't gotten in any of the live action iterations so far that I think would be a good way to criticize the failures of the system that in the comic led to him becoming the Punisher would be to make a horror movie where Punisher is the villain going around killing people and the people that he's hunting, the protagonists, the people he blames for, you know, violent crimes, deaths, we the viewer realize they're actually good people. You know, maybe they're immigrants, trans people, Muslims, some minority group that are currently unfairly targeted by conservative extremists and lied about. You know, like, you can... There are a lot of Americans right now who are under the absurd belief that members of the LGBTQ community are targeting children for perverse reasons and some even for supposedly killing them. When, you know... If you want to find pedophiles, go to a Catholic church. If you want to find people who are responsible for deaths, go to corporate America. You know, it's not... But, but yeah, you know, so I, I think that could be... Although, you know, I realize, very counter to the comic, although he did start out as a villain, and technically the Marvel Netflix version also... He, he wasn't the main villain, but he was an antagonist in Daredevil Season 2, you know. Matt was going to great lengths to to prevent him from killing people, so you know that. But yeah, um, yeah, I I I enjoy watching him, but I don't know if it's such a good thing to still have. Like, you know, the the eighty nine one has a lot of um, ah. Let's see if I can remember how you uh, uh, like. Um, yeah, it has a lot of racism towards the Japanese people. Um, I guess the, um, I don't think the 2004 movie is particularly xenophobic. Uh, are the Saint family, are they supposed to be white or Italian? Because a lot of fiction has Italian mafia, which, you know, there's some truth to that. But then if you say that, oh, we should have someone go around killing, well, then you're going to have people targeting actual regular Italian Americans, you know. Yeah, I don't think... Um, they were, I think the 2004 one gets, gets by without any, it, it just, get, uh, yeah, I completely forgot to mention, if you, if you live in, in Western Europe, the, um, um, I don't know how much of Western Europe, but I'm good, um, certainly, you know, some Western European countries, did I really not copy it? I could have sworn I, anyway, um, yeah actually does have uh, you know they they recently added the um you know the, the rest of the movies they've they've had the um 
the 89 one for a while, but they very recently added both Warzone and the 2004 one. Right now, uh, you know, when I go to my uh, Disney Plus and, and do a search, you know, it finds this show, the 2004 one, 89 one, Daredevil, of course, in season two, and Warzone. So, yeah, you know, if, if you haven't had access to them, you want to rewatch. I'm, I'm going to be rewatching. I think I already said that, but yeah, I'm definitely going to be rewatching the, the 2004 one. It's been years. You know, I, I rewatched the. Um, huh. I rewatched the 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 one for uh, the um, Warzone. I, I rewatched a couple of weeks ago. And the 89 one I watched right before doing the video on the 89 one um, weeks ago, I guess, by now. Um, I think... But, but yeah, right. I enjoy watching Punisher content. I think it might be okay to maybe retire the, the character. You know, right now, like, uh, you have cops idolizing the... the yeah. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna put a video in the in the comments uh, the description box, a video talking about, uh, you know, yeah those those issues. But, um, yeah, you know it's I I I don't personally think it's you know if if you're still gonna do Punisher now you really have to be extremely careful and. You know, yeah, for sure, like, for, for these, you know, season one, he's targeting people who work for the American government. That does a lot of, you know, you have the whole whistleblower thing. Uh, I think that really worked. And then here, you know, yeah, you have a couple of Russians over, which is also, like, regular Russian Americans just want to live their lives. They have nothing to do with the mob. They just want to, you know, but, but yeah. Uh, yeah, and, and Frank wasn't the one who killed um, I, NP, I forget his, his name, uh, that was John, and that was because he was told to by, um, yeah, 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 American, uh, um, Russian, po powerful Russian people who want something on the president of America, yeah, like Putin and, and Trump, yeah, that's a... Again, a very relevant. I it it only really dawned on me right now, but but yeah, um, yeah, you know, uh, religious extremists. You know, obviously, I'm I'm not saying that if if you meet a religious extremist, don't hurt them. You know, don't don't like get into a, a fight with them if if at all avoidable. But yeah, right now, one of the biggest threats to American citizens are. Christian conservative Americans, you know, domestic terrorists, and, you know, yeah, you know, January 6th rioters, and, and this whole, yeah. Uh, so, so yeah, I, I really think they, they did a, a good job with this here, but you do still have this thing of, you know, it's a, it's a white guy going around killing people that he thinks deserve it, and I don't think that's still something, yeah, yeah. If they put him in the MCU, like, I think they've done really great at uh, changing characters to make them relevant for the MCU. And, and again, I do think they did some, some, they took some really great steps here. I don't think they took quite enough. Um, yeah, I can imagine he won't be in the MCU. He's just too, too dark of a character. But, yeah, uh, if he returns, I hope it's still John Bernthal. I hope that, like, yeah, I think I've said absolutely everything. So, yeah, uh, so let's see. In two weeks' time, it'll be Jessica Jones Season 3 and the review of that. And then I am done with those. And then I'll be starting on the animated Star Wars shows. So... Yeah, I am really looking forward to that. I hear really good things about Clone Wars, for example, so that's going to be great. To, and, and that's also going to be, you know... Oh, oh let's see. Uh, is that one of the things where they have... I think that's one of the things where they have more episodes than the Marvel Netflix seasons, but shorter episodes. So it'll still be about two... Every two weeks that I do a video. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. I hope that you enjoyed watching as I enjoyed watching and recording.
Russo!